Hi, I'm Megan Finnerty, and I am so excited to be here with you from Verizon Innovative Learning. This is a live storytelling show, and we super appreciate you being with us. I'm the host of a powerful storytelling show right now. We're in partnership with Verizon and four individuals who are going to share true first-person stories about the life-changing difference access to technology makes. Right now, we know there are millions of students in the United States lacking connectivity, technology, and the skills they need to succeed in today's digital world. That's why Verizon has been working to help foster digital inclusion through transformational education programs called Verizon Innovative Learning. It's a key part of their goal to move the world forward for all of us through their responsible business plan, Citizen Verizon. This evening's storytelling show, or today's, depending on when you're watching it, is about the ways connectivity and inclusion can change people's lives, their families, and their entire communities. We're going to hear about how free internet access, free devices, and innovative next-generation technology-infused lessons, as well as the human connection of mentorship and passion, can change the lives of everyday Americans. Before we get into the stories, we need to bring up the storytellers, so I'd like you to greet them. I want to open the show. Jose Gonzalez is the 21st, 21st Century Learning Specialist and Verizon Innovative Learning Coach at David Davis Middle School in Compton, California. Hi, you have a very long title. Arthur Camarillo is a high school student now in Compton, wow. California, but formerly he was on Mr. Gonzalez's middle school tech team. And he's there with his mom, Naomi Camarillo, who's right. going to talk to us later in the show. Hi. And we'll also hear from Justina Nixon Santiel. She's the Director of Corporate Responsibility at Verizon. Thank you all for being here. <laughs> Hi, I know we're all giving us a wave. So live storytelling is a little bit different than a TED Talk or Toastmasters or how-tos. Instead, it's not, it's not an inspirational speech. We're not here to give you like an educational lecture or a slideshow. Instead, we ask you to visit with us. We ask you to open your heart and your mind and pay attention because we want you to be able to receive these stories in the spirit in which they're intended because that's how community change and community connecting really happens. Some of our storytellers are gonna be polished and professional and some are gonna be casual and conversational. We ask you to receive them all because that's again, how connection really happens. So if you guys are ready, we are gonna bring up our first storyteller. Arthur Camarillo is gonna to open tonight's show with a story about how connectivity inspires his creativity. Take it away, Arthur. All right, so when I was about seven years old, my favorite thing to do when I came home besides eating my mom's food was to watch YouTube videos. I don't know what about it had got my interest but I feel like it was just really great to watch other people play games that I was horrible at. Anyway, one day I ended up coming home and I had an idea that would literally change my life forever. Um, so I was the kind of curious, innovative type of kid. If I ever saw something that I liked, 
I wasn't the kid that would be like, mommy, mommy, I want that. No, 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 no. I was the type of person that would look at it and decide, all right, let me take out the pot of glue and the popsicle sticks. We're going to make something today. <laughs> I don't know why it was like that. But when I had watched that YouTube video that one amazing day, I had thought, why don't I try making this? I mean, it couldn't be that hard. So I ended up bugging my dad for weeks. And when he finally caved in and felt very sad, he gave me his iPad and let me record a video. So we propped it up. He went ahead and held the iPad and recorded me. And I made a video about how to make a transforming ninja star. I know, groundbreaking. <laughs> so um, I had really liked doing that. So I decided to get my own phone and I continued making videos. At the time, it was really just a hobby, but I just continued practicing. And over time, I slowly started getting a little bit better. Not to the point where it was great or professional, but it was still fun anyway. So let's flash forward a couple of years. I'm 11 years old, which basically means that I have flawless skin and my voice sounds like I drink, I take more helium than I drink water. Uh, so, I walk into the red gates of my new school. I'm really excited. I walk into the front office and I'm greeted by one of the most amazing people that I will ever meet in my life, a man named Mr. Gonzalez. So he went ahead um, and introduced me to himself and he went ahead and talked about all of the amazing things that they had at, at my new school. I was really excited about all of the different things that were there, but there was one thing that really, really stood out to me. There was this one place called Geek Squad. It was a team where we would learn about technology to help shape the world of our future. So I was already really excited. Then he starts taking me around, showing me all of the different places that they have at the school, one of the places called the Green Room. And as soon as I see it, I start going insane because it was always my dream to be able to work in one of those big places. So I start talking about all of the different things that could be done there, like doing mixed reality or trying to get um, of special effects on it. And it kind of all started from there. So I, over there, I spent a lot of time learning how to use different things with technology, such as coding, how to make movies, how to work with robots, all sorts of things that helped bring out the creator inside of me. So now I'm 14 years old and I spent a lot of my time in my room going ahead and still making stuff with all of the things that I had learned back at that school. Um, it was really great that um, I had all of that opportunities there. It was really great that I could have, that I learned all of that in the first place. And I honestly don't know where I would be without it. And what I wanna do when I grow up is I wanna be able to bring all of, I want to have other kids be able to practice and learn on their own passions and help bring out who they are as a young person the same way that Verizon had done for me. So I just, uh, it just makes me really happy to know that all of this happened just because of that. And I want to be able to do that whenever I grow older. And if most people don't think it's possible, just think about the fact about how all of this started with one young lad who sat on the couch making a video with an iPad. Thank you for your time. Arthur, thank you for your time and your story. Oh my gosh, it really does like mean so much to us to get to hear from an, a real person, an everyday student who was empowered, inspired by connectivity. And now you are making so many cool videos. You're doing so much interesting stuff. And mostly, I also appreciate your jokes, Arthur. You have a great <laughs> sense of humor. Thanks. Thank you so much for opening our show with so much style. We appreciate okay. you. This thing, Arthur, right? This school year, Verizon Innovative Learning is expanding to 111 Title I schools across the nation, bringing their total up to 264 schools that they support through this program. And for the first time ever, they're gonna be activated in high schools, which is a really big deal because then kids like Arthur could keep 
you know, keep on their progress. In addition, the company's growing online resources and learning tools are available to all educators and students, which is a key driver in Verizon's quest to reach 10 million youth by 2030. It's one of three goals within their Citizen Verizon initiative. It also involves things like bringing 5G technology to schools through innovating learning labs where students and teachers can be at the forefront of cutting edge technology. We're gonna hear a little bit more about those labs later in the show. Since 2012, Verizon Innovative Learning has provided over 535 million in market value towards STEM education and helping under-resourced communities bridge the digital divide. And speaking of STEM education, we're going to hear now from a storyteller whose life was entirely changed by engineering and the people who made it possible for her. Justina, take it away. Thank you, Megan. So my story starts actually around the age of eight when I emigrated to the United States from a small Caribbean island called Dominica. And I was the youngest of five children. My family settled in the South Bronx in New York, not too far from Yankee Stadium. And to say that was life changing <laughs> is probably an understatement. Um, I came from an island where we roamed on the beach. Um, I used to dig for crabs. We swam in the ocean. Um, we lived on a farm. And I came into an area where we didn't have as much freedom. And it was an area that also was crime ridden. So my mother, who brought us to the United States for opportunity, she wanted us to have a better life. Um, she went on to obtain a position as a teacher in All Saints Elementary School in East Harlem. And while she was taking on this teaching position, she actually started going to college, attending college so that she would obtain her public school certification. And we also attended All Saints Elementary School as well, my, myself and two of my siblings. And it was, it was actually a it was a difficult time for us. We, we lived in the South Bronx, attended East Harlem. My mother, who was the ultimate teacher, always wanted to get to school at least an hour or more before her students. So I remember being on the trains at 6 a.m., heading down to East Harlem, walking through some dangerous areas, and then attending this school. And in fifth grade, the most amazing teacher, Mrs. Timothy, I, I will never forget her, she helped me acclimate to not just the school, but she helped me acclimate to the United States. She was empathetic. She was so wonderful and warm. And I just remembered a moment um, as a shy and very introverted girl where she encouraged me to go to the window. And I stepped to the window and all of my classmates were looking at me and they were cheering me on. And it was because it was the first snowfall that I ever experienced. And it was just such a beautiful snowfall. And it, it just was a wonderful time. And that's when I really truly became excited, you know, about being in New York, about attending my school, about just the warmness of my classmates. And then after All Saints School, which eventually closed, unfortunately, I attended Cardinal Spellman High School in the Bronx. Um, which actually became known later on as being a, uh, the high school that um, Supreme Court Justice Sonia Sotomayor um, graduated from. And it was in Cardinal Spellman that I realized that I had a propensity for math, that I enjoyed problem solving, that I was always thinking about how things worked. And my sister, Rowena, who is older, she's two years older than me and was already in college, she was helping me with my college applications. And she said, why don't you apply to the School of Engineering? I think that would be a great fit for you. She said the young people on her campus um, who were majoring in engineering just seemed super smart <laughs> and they were very well respected on campus. And I applied to the University of Buffalo School of Engineering and was accepted. And when I entered the School of Engineering, I didn't realize how much 
so many students were so ahead of me, whether they had participated in engineering activities, whether their parents had helped them um, with this just understanding, you know, what STEM was all about. Um, I really struggled. Uh, I took five years to graduate, not, not the typical four, as some of my peers. And it, it, it was a, a very challenging four, five years. Um, I was not always accepted in many of the groups that had male students. Um, I was actually the only black female to graduate with a mechanical engineering degree uh, the year that I graduated. So it, it was definitely a difficult time. But I remember my guidance counselor, um, Drexel Gidney, and he helped me so much. He actually helped me get engaged with NSBE, the National Society of Black Engineers, where I was the lead community um, chair who actually created um, programs for local students in Buffalo to provide them with exposure to STEM. And Drexel Gidney also helped me obtain my first engineering internship and my first engineering job. And that was at West Valley Nuclear Services, which was led by the Department of Energy. It was also the same time that I obtained my citizenship so that I was able to work at, at a Department of Energy property. And at West Valley Nuclear Services, I had an amazing mentor, Dan Carl. He was a professional engineer. Um, he helped guide me with my work, which was around making sure that radioactive slurry did not seep into the local environment. And what I really learned from Dan Carl, however, was how to smell the roses, how to enjoy the sunrise, how to enjoy the sunset, how to really just look around me and enjoy nature. And I really appreciated that because I used to when I was very young and I had lost it along the way as I was just very focused on my, uh, obtaining my degree, focused on setting off on my career. So Dan Carl was just a wonderful inspiration for me and, and just helped me look at the world around me. And then I wanted to come back to New York City to be with my family. So I applied for an engineering position at this telecommunications company called Ninex, New York, New England Exchange. And that company eventually became Verizon. And at Verizon, I had a number of different opportunities. I, I always tell young people when I meet them that, you know, what I enjoyed about engineering and I couldn't think of anything else I, I, I wanted to do at the time was that it opened so many doors for me. So when I worked at Verizon, I started in engineering, I moved to product development, I moved to marketing. And in my early 30s, my husband and I were trying to expand our family and we had some difficulties. So I actually took a step back from my career. I took a step back, I stayed home for a while. I focused on my young children. I had a son who was born at 25 weeks and he needed a lot of my attention. And he's beautiful and he's uh, just a wonderful tall young man right now. <laughs> and he developed well, but I had to spend some time focused on him and my family. But when I was out of the workforce at that time, I decided that I had a passion for education. I decided to be a teacher. And I went the alternate path to teach in. I um, took courses, I took the certification test. Um, I became certified to teach in New Jersey. And I was actually about to start to be a student teacher when this opportunity to come back to Verizon to focus on working in the Verizon Foundation and to create innovative programs that supported STEM engagement and achievement for young people all over the world, like Arthur. Um, when that was presented to me, I, I jumped at the opportunity. It was scary. Um, I had been home for a few years. I had not been in the workforce for quite some time. And for the opportunity to come back and work on something that I had a passion for, 
for education, for STEM, um, for giving you know, opportunity to young people across the US. I was so excited. Um, and I owe this to Rose Kirk, my current boss and my mentor, who gave me that opportunity. And um, it, was, it was challenging at first. I had been home for a while and <laughs> my um, husband and I had to divide up the responsibilities again, but um, my husband Willis is a wonderful man and amazing partner and we made it work. And in the last nine years, I've had the amazing, amazing job where I create initiatives like Verizon Innovative Learning, where we provide technology and access and teacher training and STEM resources to under-resourced schools across the country, um, impacting so many lives, preparing young people for the jobs of the future. And I look back and it's exactly where I should be. And it has been an amazing journey. Justina, thank you so much for your story, but mostly thank you for turning your experience into so much generosity and so much good for so many other people. It, um, I'm gonna be like, thank you. But everyone, I wanna underline a couple key ideas in Justina's story. Like you heard her talk about um, because living as an immigrant and then being exposed to STEM, she was mentored and now she has turned around and she runs a machine of mentoring. Who We're, we're gonna meet one of those mentors in a minute. Um, you know, She had people who poured their resources and their passion for STEM education into her. Now Justina does that on behalf of literally, as you guys heard in my intro, hundreds of schools and thousands of young people. So thank you for your story, but also thank you for talking about such big ideas and how you turn those ideas into action. Awesome. Our next storyteller is Jose Gonzalez, who you met earlier and who Arthur mentioned in just um, in the middle of his story. And he's going to talk to us about who it is his life's passion and his heart's joy to, to connect kids with technology and see what happens next. Take it away. Thank you, Megan. Thank you for inviting me on the show. Well, uh, 2017, I was the intervention specialist at Bunch Middle School, and we had heard about Verizon's grant that they were providing iPads for school. Well, for us, it would have been a, ga it would, it, a game changer. You know, although we had computer labs, not all of our classes had equal access. And many of our students had a challenging time trying to finish any type of internet-based project. And the worst times is when science projects would do. I remember students going from class to class, begging teachers to use the few computers that we had. And many of our students did not have either internet or devices at home. You know, the digital divide in Compton was as wide as a San Andreas fault. And many of our students, because they had siblings to take care of, uh, they couldn't stay after school either. And so our principal had mentioned to us about this grant, that they were selected middle schools and we weren't sure if we qualified. Well, I remember the day that um, the Verizon rep came to visit us, Sean Wilson. She was just so uplifting and positive. It was love at first sight for us and for the students. She spoke with the students, she toured the school, and then later we found out we received the grant. Well, now thanks to the grant, our students are no longer limited by device connectivity or school hours. Um, you see, not only, the grant is, not only does the grant provide devices, but also a free data plan for all our students and teachers. There's also an intensive support system that comes with the grant. Teachers receive professional development, I received training. I became the VILS coach and got this fancy title, the 21st century learning specialist. You see, that's what's important, not just devices. It's the support that comes along with that grant. What good are devices if you don't know how to use them? And so my coach, Sean, is an amazing woman. Um, she not only gave me teaching strategies, but she also was my sounding board. She encouraged me to, uh, to explore new ways of learning. And the experience for me has been challenging both professionally and uh, personally. You know, for me, public speaking has not been my great, greatest strength. And so um, I was terrified when they asked me to participate in a webinar, and I've done several. I have even led um, um, a Twitter conference as well. And so it's been a team effort that brought me here. And I would just want to thank, thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Betty, and the Digital Promise 
and Verizon team. And I also want to thank our own uh, district superwoman, Ms. Michelle Dawson, and her amazing ed tech team. And so for our students, many their worlds have changed as well. You know, students have become more engaged. Many have created amazing projects. And suddenly, students from Compton earn the news about positive things. And so there's many changes that occurred at our school. First, our students were no longer limited by devices or by uh, connectivity. They can leverage their iPads anytime and anywhere. Our school solely, our teachers are changing their teaching strategies and more students are becoming engaged. Now we're progressing away from simple assignments. Imagine now that you're in a science lab you're, and where students can learn about gravity and the states of matter to simulations online. Or a social studies class where students can take a virtual tour of the Mayan ruins. And even our own tech team, they have expanded their capabilities as well. Um, Valerie created an amazing uh, stop motion video about cubism, where shapes and images convey the feeling of the art. Irania, be Irania became the second middle school student in the US to rec be recognized by the Genius organization, an organization that promotes student tech leaders. She created over 100 STEM projects. Hanya, I mean, uh, Alex, I'm sorry, Alex and Uriah passed a Google certification exam. They can teach adults on Google products. And right here in this lab that I sit in, in our new school, Davis Middle School, not only did we receive the Verizon grant, but we also won the Verizon lab. We have uh, 3D printers, green rooms, and, 20, and plenty of opportunities for STEM. And coupled with our innovative uh, principal that we have, Mr. Patrick Sullivan, we're looking forward to just a fantastic new year. Well, the technology has also helped our tech team find its voice. They've learned now that they have a say in things. Juan created uh, a, a disaster room trailer about global warming. Hanya and Mark created a prototype of the mall of the future. Christy and her crew created building blocks made out of mycelium fungus that meet the United Nations Sustainability Goals. And Yvonne created uh, a project that highlight African-American inventors. You know, this is not just about um, education. This is about equity as well. You know, the Verizon grant has promoted and encouraged minority students to seek an interest in STEM. I have I share this dream with my with, with my students that one day that there's going to be a Mars colony with faces that look like them. And you know, the, the Verizon grant has also created other avenues as well. A few years ago, we had the opportunity to visit uh, a major Hollywood studio and UC, Ber UC Berkeley in San Francisco. Our students had the opportunity to tour the city for four days. I even brought my own hero, my granddaughter, Emma, who's been part of the team since she was four. Many of the kids, it's the first time they had been away from home. And many of them, the first time they were in a hotel. And it was a life-changing experience just watching the, the joy in, the, in our students' faces, watching the look of wonder in their eyes. And, you know, and, I, and I thought to myself, this is what the teaching profession is all about. There is nothing like it in the world. And I've also learned the, the importance of relationship as well. You know, the relationships that we have with parents and, and with teachers. Uh, you know, something I always say that the relationships that we build with parents outside the classroom 
is that gives us teacher success inside the classroom. And so um, our roles have changed. I became more of a co-teacher and facilitator. Our students have taken an interest in learning. Many of our tech team students teach teachers on technology and troubleshoot computer issues at school. Many of our alumni have been selected by some of the, type high, some of the top high schools in our area, including Arthur, one of my best students. And so I'm, I'm thinking that also that when our tech team was invited, we've been invited also to do demonstrations outside of our school. And I was extremely proud when uh, the team was invited to do a, a creative video for a school in Santa Monica about uh, promoting STEM for elementary school students. Imagine that. Compton students sharing with students from Santa Monica. You know, um, our students of learning, our tech team students of learning to take ownership in their learning. Senior members teach junior members. And I wanna tell you that I have, Arthur's parents are just beautiful people. And I, I am so thankful for them and the support that they and other parents have given us. Arthur is a teacher's dream. He's inquisitive, um, eager to learn, to try new things. I've co I have co-teach with him on many projects. I've even allowed him to teach my class on many occasions. When, we wanted to, when I wanted to teach the class about video production, I let Arthur lead. He already had a YouTube channel. What could I teach him about video editing? When our team had um, our STEAM Fest competition, our district STEAM competition, Arthur created, we built, we built the uh, Star Trek Galileo, a 12 foot mock-up of the Star Trek Galileo shuttlecraft. Arthur created a sensor station out of Raspberry PIs. Then he went above and beyond and he learned Vulcan, the language of Star Trek, sang a song with Emma and then also created a universal translator app that translated Vulcan into English. And I know that, and I also bought him and Emma a set of Vulcan ears for the competition. And I know I can imagine Arthur as a teenager would probably not want me to use this word and describe them, but I thought they look absolutely cute. Thank you so much for allowing me to share. Jose, thank you so much for your story, your sincerity, your passion for these kids. I really mean it. Like, thank you so much for introducing us to so many of your students of whom you are so justifiably proud. And your memories, your observations are so detailed, like the mall of the future, the fungus building blocks, tiny ears. You really have gone out of your way to paint a picture for us about what equality and equity can look like in STEM and how it can change, not just a kid or two, but what you're talking about is change that school-wide district-wide. Thank, thank you. you so much. No, thank you. Thank you for teaching. Thank you for your passion. Thank you for joining us here. We have a quick PSA from Verizon, and then we're going to meet Naomi, Arthur's mom, to talk to us about the role parents play in STEM education. This year, teachers are learning new ways to teach, parents are learning to lesson plan, and young minds are learning a new normal. This year, we are all students. At Verizon, we're enabling the education that students deserve. With credential teacher training, free lesson plans for parents, and tech-enabled solutions for schools nationwide, it's Citizen Verizon in Action, our plan for economic, environmental, and social advancement. So we've heard throughout this evening about the power that parents can play behind the scenes, and now we're gonna meet Naomi Camarillo. Hi, Naomi. Hello. <laughs> 
thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. So we are going to close out our, our short little show with you. And we want to ask you, tell us how you as a parent got connected to the tech team. I heard it involves a school bus. Yes, totally. Uh, it, it started as an amazing adventure. I definitely, I'm a mother that likes to take pictures and videos, like probably most moms. Yeah. I, um, I didn't want it to um, just stop there as being, you know, part of uh, the life of my kid and all those amazing experiences that he was enjoying at school. Every single time he would come home and, you know, and we'll share, you know, all of um, the great adventures he was uh, learning about, you know, with Mr. Gonzalez and, and then being part, you know, of this great opportunity that Verizon offered to the school. Um, I started to become more involved, you know, with um, uh, my kid's life and being trying to be as close as possible, uh, giving him space to breathe, but being, being there as a support, not only for my kid, but yes for the teacher as well and the group of the students the geek the famous geek squad um it was amazing um i remember i, I was uh, a little shy about it at the beginning um i wanted to be there but I, at the same time i i did i was shy about asking you know if i could actually be part of the group so there was this story in which um yeah they had an opportunity to uh go and compete at ucla they were the school from Bunch Middle School were representing, yeah, um, all the students there. And um, I wanted to be part of that field trip. I knew where they were going to go, but I didn't know exactly at what part of the school they were going to be at. So I followed the bus <laughs> and I got there. Um, I said, well, the only way to do it, it was just, you know, by not um, losing sight of my son. So, yeah, well, when I got there, I wave at the people over there they saw me they invited me to uh, be part of the group they well they were yeah really nice with me and i'm so thankful yeah because ever since i started to get more involved um, a way to be um, part of our kids life is by being supportive teachers sometimes they ask you know for help to the parents in in a they invite the parents to be involved you know, on the kids' activities or at school or whatever project they're um, they're working on. Like this, um, in this story, will the STEAM um, Fest and all the robotics competitions, everything that had to do, you know, with um, amazing opportunities for them, for the students to continue learning um, and to learn about different um, ways to use technology. Um, something that Verizon, um, luckily was able to to uh share with the kids and it, it became yeah an amazing amazing adventure um we as parents i want to encourage other parents also you know to be part of it it's not just in the end about just taking pictures and taking videos it's about being there and keeping memories not only for ourselves but for our kids as well Oh, Naomi, I so appreciate that. You're like tearing up a tiny bit. I have one tiny question to ask you. How did life in your house change when Arthur got his own iPad? Because he talked smack about his dad's iPad and then he said everything was different when he had his own. What did you notice was different about his connectivity? He was so excited. He kept, he was more busy, you know, full of ideas. Became even more creative, you know, with, um, all the projects that they had planned to do at school, like in robotics, he kept, you know, organizing the videos and, and working and talking, you know, even more about all the projects. I remember it was so exciting, so excited for for us at home to see that um, he wouldn't only just mention the projects, the projects that he was involved at school, mm -hmm. but in the end we would even see the trophies. Oh, it was so heartbreaking for all for us, you know, to see how good, you know, and how successful they were becoming. Um, I'm really happy that we that I got a um, an opportunity to be part of this experience, not only with my son, but also I had an opportunity to meet this awesome person, Mr. Gonzalez. He, I'm so thankful for all the work he did, yeah, with my son, and not only him, but all of the other students. I know that uh, we are. We will always, yeah, remember him as one of the best teachers 
our kids have yeah ever met and in, in our for ourselves you know something i wish i would have had yeah, a teacher like him yeah when i was younger oh. <laughs> never met a person like him before i'm so proud of him because it's not just about being a teacher it's about loving what you do and we could see it in him thank you for to verizon also for being part of this story and and being part of our, our yeah yeah my, my kids um um life also um they gave him they gave arthur arthur the same the, an opportunity that he didn't have before uh he became more creative um he was already and he's still creative but he had an opportunity to um apply that creativity yeah in many other ways he is creating songs now he's a little bit more involved in um a music production and he's talking about yeah um, creating you know videos and stuff it's amazing it's just the opportunities are endless and that's what i'm thankful you know for the fact that my son had this blessing in his life to have a great teacher like mr gonzalez and a company that became part of the yeah my, my son's life too <laughs> oh thank, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. We really appreciate it. And we share your enthusiasm for Mr. Gonzalez as well. Thank you so much for being part of our show. I'm mm -hmm. gonna ask everyone to, to pop up real quick so we can thank all of our storytellers this evening. Jose, hi. Mm -hmm. Arthur sliding back into the frame. Mm -hmm. Thank you all so much for joining us tonight. We so appreciate your stories, mm -hmm. your enthusiasm and your heart. We hope you've enjoyed tonight's show. It's about connectivity and how inclusion fundamentally can change people's lives their families, and their entire communities. We hope you agree with us that this is an idea that feels more relevant now than ever before. Thank you so much to Verizon Innovative Learning for their work investing in communities across America and for bringing us this opportunity to share stories and receive one another. Have a great evening. This year, we are all students. At Verizon, we're enabling education however possible, preparing teachers and parents, and providing tech solutions to schools nationwide. It's Citizen Verizon in action, our plan for economic, environmental, and social advancement.